welcome to our Christmas Day service. I bring you good news of great joy. A Saviour has been born to you, Alleluia. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, Alleluia. He is Christ the Lord, Alleluia. We worship and adore him, Alleluia. So we light our last candle, which is to celebrate Christmas Day itself. The first time we light this is usually at midnight mass. We light our last candle to remember the birth of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. As the prophets promised so long ago, you have come to us once again, and with the shepherds we are filled with wonder and amazement. Lord, you come as a tiny, fragile baby, yet we know that you are God and you are with us. May the flame of this candle remind us that you are the light of the world and that because of you we will never walk in darkness. Amen. Amen. So we say sorry together. As we kneel with the shepherds before the newborn Christ child, we open our hearts in penitence and faith and we say together, Father God, we are sorry for the things we do and say and think which make you sad and for not thinking others before ourselves. Please forgive us and help us to love you and other people more and more. Amen. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins and assure us of his never-ending love for us. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people, Lord of Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father. We worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, And the collect for Christmas Day. Almighty God, you have given us your only begotten Son to take our nature upon him, and as at this time to be born of a pure virgin, grant that we, who have been born again and made your children by adoption and grace, may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, 
and the strength of the hills are his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, prove me and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways. Unto whom I swear in my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And now we have the first lesson. The reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them has the light shined. Thou hast multiplied the nation and not increased the joy. They joy before thee according to the joy in harvest. And as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom in order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even for ever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Praise be to God.
now we have the epistle. The reading comes from Paul's second letter to Titus, reading verses 11 to 14. For God has revealed his grace for the salvation of all mankind. That grace instructs us to give up ungodly living and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this world as we wait for the blessed day we hope for when the glory of God of our great God and Saviour Jesus Christ will appear. He gave himself for us to rescue us from all wickedness and to make us a pure people who belong to him alone and are eager to do good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Alleluia. The Gospel reading is taken from Luke chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrolment, 
when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be enrolled, each to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And in that region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy, which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi everyone. So this is uh, Christmas Day uh, in the morning. A very odd Christmas period we're having and here we are locked down again. We closed because we we're in tier four which is kind of locked down without being locked down. Um, so we just thought it was safer to be in our houses and uh, I hope that whatever you're doing you're you know keeping your distance and being safe. Um, it, it's turned out to be a bit of a blue Christmas. Uh, I haven't really thought about blue Christmas at all really um, apart from occasional occasionally being mindful of the fact that some people aren't having the wonderful Christmas or the wonderful family archetypal Christ Christmas that I'm lucky enough to have or have been in the past few years. There's an Elvis Presley song, um, Blue Christmas, which doesn't say very much really, apart from the fact that he's obviously uh, the person that he's in love with is having a white Christmas, so she's clearly, or he, is having a, a, a nice time somewhere else while he's alone at Christmas. But of course, Blue Christmas isn't just about that being alone at Christmas, which is a particularly bad year for that. But also, it's um, for that empty chair, and there will be a lot of people this year who've suddenly lost someone who have that empty chair uh, now at their dining table uh, or in their lounge, um, and and just won't be able to process Christmas in the same way without that person. But Christmas comes and goes, whether we like it or not, and we have to. Uh, soldier on through the dark times as well as the nice ones. For many of us our blue Christmas is more about not being able to be with family and friends. We uh, found out from uh, Bojo just the just the moment uh, as the Christmas food was being delivered for uh, for two families. Um, now there's only three of us and a baby to eat all this food so I'd probably be not fitting in this chair after Christmas. <laughs> but what can you do but laugh? Um, we'll be eating turkey until February, but actually we kind of like that, so that's all right. But blue Christmas can be, can be a horrible thing to look forward to, and we know that uh, suicide rates go up at Christmas, even on normal years, because people are so low and so lonely. We do have lots of ways that we can reach out to people and I just hope that you will all reach out to people, those ones who will be with you and those people that you know, uh, that God puts on your heart to care for this Christmas, even if it means by Zoom or phone. So I hope that you will reach out to anybody you know who is alone, on their own, lonely, lost someone who needs that extra bit of contact. Um, I'm grateful for all of the little messages, for the cards that I've got so far, um, and for the little gifts. People have gone to the trouble of 
buying me little gifts for Christmas, which is very nice after a, such a difficult year. We always see Christmas um, in sparkling lights and our sweet church services and our lovely cribs. Um, here we have a particularly lovely version of uh, the nativity scene, but it's very Englified, very sanitised, and I love it, but it's not reality in any way, shape or form. If you if you just run through the, the nativity scene, not this little one, but the larger one, um, you find that Mary is a pregnant teenager. Obviously she's given birth at this point. Uh, Jesus has been born uh, in totally unsuitable circumstances in in a stable with animals. I mean, I mean, I, we are frightened by our sanitised hospitals, never mind a stable. Um, Joseph was a man who had a dream and is hoping that that dream is true because he's taking on a child and he doesn't really know where that child has come from. He believes the angel in the dream and he's a good and faithful man. But I'm sure he had his doubts, at least on that journey. The shepherds, obviously, they come straight out of the fields uh, after meeting a whole bunch of uh, angels who were incredibly noisy, the angels, though not quiet, all right? Um, they come out of the fields, filthy they would have been, because they spent their lives in fields. Um, and they came to visit the baby, so, you know, I mean, obviously Jesus' immune system is getting a good boost at this point. He's put in a manger for his bed. Now, I'm assuming that they would have cleared it out and put some new hay in it, but it's still, um, I don't know if you've ever cleaned that sort of thing uh, in a horse's, st horse's stable or whatever, they're always pretty manky. I mean, even if you scrub them with, uh, with the sort of modern things that we can these days, they are quite dirty. Um, and then of course, Bless them, the wise men who were following this star uh, get lost, or maybe not lost, but they're very late because they don't arrive until probably two years later. And so this is not a perfect story. That beautiful nativity, um, I tapestried a nativity, which is all of my favourite bits. The most imaginative cartoon version, if you like, of, of it. But that's not the reality of how it was. Jesus didn't come to a perfect world, he came to one that was dirty and grimy and full of bacteria, and we know all about those, um, and um, viruses. He risked coming from the heavenly place down to earth at Christmas time as a baby. I mean, he, you couldn't be more vulnerable in any way, shape or form. And so we know that he came to find out what his creation was like. He lived with it intimately. And I don't know if he got what he was expecting. He definitely did what he came to do. He journeyed along with people. He was friends with them. He loved them. And he loved us so much that he went through a crucifixion, uh, another really messy business, to rescue us so that we could one day ascend and be with him in the heavenly places. If you're feeling blue right now, if you're feeling that the world is horrible and you really don't want anything to do with it, let me remind you that the first Christmas wasn't perfect and this Christmas isn't going to be perfect. And if you're going to be honest with yourself, you'll know that last Christmas wasn't perfect either. Uh, it didn't have such big challenges and it didn't have such great rules so we can't be together but nothing is ever perfect it's finding the joy in the moments and making sure that we remember those i was reminded today on tiktok that um that the way that we work um we one one negative message has to be overcome by three but but actually there's an important lesson in that that we should chase the good things in life, do things that are good for us. And that is talking to friends and family. It is treating ourselves a little bit over Christmas. It is enjoying the old films that we love so much and, uh, and just making ourselves feel at home for Christmas. Um, 
in all those ways that we used to. Spending time remembering those precious people that we don't have with us anymore, even if that sheds a tear or two, is good for us because it brings them back to us. And those memories, that love that we've shared and that love that we share with each other in any way that we can, through our memories, through our phone calls, you know, through our cards and our, our little gifts, they build us up. They're all positive reflections of the way that we like our Christmas to be and hopefully very soon we'll be again. We'll be back to that normal Christmas, fussing about the shopping, fussing about why it is that, you know, Auntie Flo always sleeps through Christmas dinner. Things will return to normal because we now have a way of doing that. It's just going to take a little longer. So have faith. Remember that no Christmas was ever perfect, not even the first one. And the real meaning of Christmas isn't really about all of that sparkly stuff. It's about the love that we share with each other. So go and share that love in whatever way you are allowed to do this Christmas. Amen. Amen. We say our creed together. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Prayer for the season of Christmas. Holy Jesus, by being born one of us and lying humbly in a manger, you show how much God loves the world. Let the light of your love always shine in our hearts until we reach our home in heaven and see you on your throne of glory. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, your bed at Bethlehem draws us to kneel in wonder at heaven touching earth. Accept our heartfelt praise as we worship you, our Savior and our eternal God. Loving Jesus, you were born in a stable, but worshipped by the angels. Be with all who are lonely and with all who feel distant from celebration, especially this time of pandemic and the need to protect our vulnerable and our loved ones. Be for us a living hope that lightens our heart, even as we spend this Christmas with social distancing in mind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, as you heal the sick, bring healing to those in our families who are ill today at home and in hospitals anywhere in the world, because you are the God of all. By your bed, we are hopeful that you bring us salvation and healing. We pray that you heal us physically, spiritually, socially, emotionally, and relationally. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Christ born for us, Son of God, giving for us, help us to know you, to worship and to serve you. Lord, the kings brought you myrrh, frankincense, and gold. We have nothing of our own to bring but bring to you what we have, which is thanks and praise, especially the season of your bed. We bring you our lives for your life. Jesus, Savior, Son of Mary, you know us and love us, and you share our lives and heal us, and hear our prayer whenever we pray. Glory to you forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May God, who has called us out of darkness into this marvelous light, bless us and fill us with peace. Christ, for whom there was no room in the inn, give courage to all who are homeless. Christ, who fled into Egypt, give comfort to all refugees. Christ, who fasted in the desert, give relief to all who are starving. Christ, who hung in agony on the cross, give strength to all who suffer. 
and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever and ever. Merciful Lord, accept this prayer for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Peace be with you. with you and also with you lift up your hearts we lift them to the lord let's give thanks to the lord our god it is right to give thanks and praise almighty god good father to us all your face is turned towards your world in love you gave us jesus your son to rescue us from sin and death your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in thanks for every gift that comes from heaven to the darkness jesus came as your light with signs of faith and words of hope he touched the untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean the crowds came out to see your son yet at the end they turned on him on the night he was betrayed he came to the table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people jesus blessed you father for the food he took the bread and gave thanks broke it and said this is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup and gave it and said, This is my blood shed for you all. For the forgiveness of sins, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. Send your spirit on us now that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven where all creation worships you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessing, Blessing and, and honour and glory and, and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. We pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive as we 
brought him to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is holy. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is Lord. To the, the glory of God, God the Father. Please do receive communion wherever you are. Christians awake, salute the happy morn, where on the Saviour of the world was born. Rise to adore the mystery of love, which hosts of angels chanted from above. With them the joyful tidings first begun of God incarnate and the Virgin Son. Oh, may we keep and ponder in our mind God's wondrous love in saving lost mankind. Trace we the babe who hath received our loss from his poor manger to his bitter cross. Tread in his steps, assisted by the grace, till man's first heavenly state again takes place. Then may we hope the angelic hosts among to sing redeemed a glad triumphant song. He that was born upon this joyful day, around us all his glory shall display, saved by his love, incessant we shall sing, eternal praise to him's almighty King. Let us pray. God, God our Father, Father whose word has come among us in the holy child of Bethlehem, may the light of faith fill our hearts and shine in our words and deeds, through him who is Christ the Lord. Amen. It has been done. The good news has been shared. A young maiden will bear a child, and she will call him Jesus. But that is the beginning of the story, a story that has not yet ended. A, a story that includes us, a story of which we are part. And so we go out to live the story, to, to tell of the hope that is being born among us this Christmas, to share the love of the season with the world, to be agents of peace in times of trouble, to sing songs of deep and abiding joy. May the Father, who has loved the Eternal Son from before the foundation of the world, shed that love upon you, his children. Amen. May Christ, who has by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with joy and peace. Amen. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, by whose overshadowing Mary became the God-bearer, give you grace to carry the good news of Christ. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Go in peace and love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Merry Christmas, whether you're on your own or whether you're lucky enough to be together with family. Do celebrate the season and remember that you are never alone with God.